Good morning students our today's topic is very interesting topic that is bird migration bird migration is the periodic movement of bird from one place to another and back this bird migration is different from immigration and emigration where the individuals they permanently move from one place to another and don't come back the resident birds they are those which do not migrate now types of migration migration basically they can be altitudinal that is vertical migration can be latitudinal longitudinal migration total migration partial migration diurnal migration nocturnal migration daily migration seasonal migration and irregular migration and the purpose of migration is breeding feeding for suitable climatic conditions now some of the examples of different types of migration are altitudinal migration is shown by violet green swallows winter migration is shown by snow buddings irregular migration is shown by heron partial migration is shown by blue jays long distance migration is shown by white strokes short distance migration is shown by snow patterned seasonal migration is shown by swifts longitudinal migration is shown by starlings and daily migration is shown by manas causes of migration various causes of migrations they are there that is the ripening of gonads instinct scarcity of food hostile temperature and the change in the day length the range of migration depends upon conditions and the species for example the arctic tern they travel 11000 miles to reach antarctica in winters european white stork covers about 8000 miles to south africa arctic terns they are the longest traveler speed of migration average speed of flight during migration is 30 to 50 miles per hour for example stork they covers non stop 600 kilometers in 6 hours whereas pullover covers non stop 880 kilometers in 11 hours altitude of migration most birds fly up to the height of 3000 feet some small birds fly at 5000 to 14000 feet during night some fly very close to earth for example the migratory geese regularity of migration the birds maintain regularity and accuracy and remain constant in choice of the breeding place every year they will come route of migration is also fixed they follow the same route every year guiding mechanism now for migration various guiding mechanisms they are there that is the landmarks like the rivers valleys oceans the deserts and earth magnetic field is the another guiding mechanism telluric currents that is the air current which may lead the birds experience of the bird sun it acts as compass stars internal clock and compass now the stimulus external stimulus is the variation in the day length whereas internal stimulus is favorable energy balance and physiological state of the gonads now advantages of migration birds avoid harsh climatic extremes migratory birds get more food and better living condition long day length hours to search for the food new habitat for resting less predators
Now this is a route which is shown by the Arctic Turn, which covers 11,000 miles from North Pole to Antarctica. It is found south of the tip South America, Africa, Australia at one end of its migratory route. That means it ranges from near Antarctic Ocean all the way to the Arctic. It covers whole of the earth. The most common pattern involves flying north to the spring to breed in the temperature or Arctic summer and return to autumn to wintering ground in warmer regions in the south. Now this is how the smittery is maintained during the migration. As you all know, migration is a challenge within nature conservation work since many population of birds regularly move over huge areas and problems en route or in the wintering quarters can result in declining breeding population of area far away. Many migratory birds are declining in number and detailed information about the annual movement including important stopover sites and winter quarters is a top conservation priority. Primary motivation for migration appears to be the food. Some hummingbirds choose not to migrate if fed through the winter. Also, a longer day of the Nadran summer provides extended time for breeding birds to feed their young. This helps Diana birds to produce large clutches than related non-migratory species that remain in the tropics. As the day shorten in the autumn, the birds return to warmer regions where the available food supply varies little with the season. These advantages offset the high stress, physiological exertion cost and other risk of migration such as predation. So in this figure you can see how the bird it moves from one place to another. The breeding range is different and the wintering range is different. So because of the food it moves. Now predation can be heightened during the migration. The Eleonora falcon which breeds on Mediterranean island has very late breeding season which is coordinated with autumn passage of southbound passerine migrates which it feeds to its young. The similar strategy is adopted by greater noctule bat which preys on nocturnal passerine migrants. The higher concentration of migratory birds at stopover sites makes them prone to parasites and pathogen which require a heightened immune response. Warmer temperatures are prompting species to expand their breeding range towards the pole. That is due to the global warming, the individuals they are moving towards the pole to stay in comfortable environment. Compared to 1970, Swinson's thrush now has been mean breeding range latitude 88 miles farther north and blue jay natchecker Neck catcher has a mean breeding range 195 kilometers far north. Range, the geographical area where a species is located can shift in response to habitat changes such as land use changes, introduction of new species, elimination of competitor, internal species dynamics such as genetic mutation that allows the individual to tolerate new condition and the climate change. So individuals they are moving if the warmer temperatures they are increasing towards the pole. Now gender differences. The migration pattern may be on sex basis. For example, female chaffinches migrate while males they are the residents. Flyway pattern usually the pattern is flyway with one bird leading. V-shaped pattern is shown. The route is usually followed with the help of mountain, coastlines and river. 
the direction of wind however is more powerful when there is a giant ocean and vast seas birds usually follow one route to proceed and other one to return in north america the birds follow clockwise migration pattern in which birds going to north shift to west and those flying south tends to shift eastwards many flying birds in groups called flocks which reduces energy cost for large birds such as geese flying in flock saves 12 to 20% energy they utilize flying alone now next is the flightless bird migration as you know the emus they are the flightless birds they move from breeding site to rainy sites in dry weather penguins they migrate to the ocean in groups auk babies migrate by swimming until they can fly seagulls during non breeding time moves in whole ocean for seasonal food abundance now this is how the route of various birds that is northern vetier arctic tern then falcon short tailed shearwater ruffs swinson's hawk so you are going to draw their routes on the map longest migration i have told you is shown by the arctic tern this is arctic tern sitting on the snow in summer it breeds in the arctic north and then moves to south for spending winter on arctic ice packs the shortest distance between two pole is 15000 kilometers but bird usually makes a route taking 30000 to 40000 kilometers round trip the orientation and the navigation the birds uses their senses for navigation most of them they uses as i have told you sun as a compass the navigation may also be based on their abilities such as ability to detect the magnetic field use visual landmarks or the olfactory clues the older individual even use correlation of wind drift the migratory birds use two forms of electromagnetic tools to find and reach their destination one is innate and while the other is their experience when the birds are young they migrate correct by following the direction of earth's magnetic field but they are unaware about how far their destination is now here are some of the pictures of the migratory birds located in sultanpur bird sanctuary sultanpur bird sanctuary is basically a lake with about 7 island inside where birds do nesting 250 bird species they normally visit the sultanpur bird sanctuary some of them they are resident while the other they are migratory coming in the month of november and going back in february about 100 migratory birds they arrive each year like siberian cranes great flamingos ruffs black winged stilts common teal common green shank northern pintail yellow wedge wedge tail white wedge tail northern shoveler rosy pelican good wall wood sand piper spotted sand piper eurasian vigian so the birds they show various adaptations birds need to alter their metabolism in order to meet the demand of migration the storage of energy through the accumulation of fat and control of sleep in nocturnal migrants requires special physiological adaptation in addition the feather of bird suffer from wear and tear and require to be molted the timing of this molt usually once a year but sometimes too varies with some species molting prior to moving to their winter ground and other molting prior to returning to their breeding ground apart from physiological adaptation migration sometimes requires behavioral changes such as 
flying in flocks to reduce the energy used in migration or the risk of predation threats major threat is the human activity to the migratory birds the distance involved in the bird migration means that they often cross political boundaries of countries and conservation requires international cooperation several international treaties have been signed to protect the migratory species including the migratory bird treaty of 1918 in us and african eurasian migratory water bird agreement during migration the flocks were at a mile wide and 300 miles long taking several days to pass and continuing up a billion birds other significant areas include stopover sites between the wintering and the breeding territories hunting along the migratory route can also take a heavy toll the population of siberian cranes that witnessed in india declined due to hunting along the route particularly in afghanistan and central asia birds were last seen in their favorable wintering ground in cleolarido national park in 2002 structures such as power line wind farms offshore oil rings have also been known to affect the migratory birds habitat destruction by land use changes in the big is the biggest three threat and shallow wetland that are stop over and wintering site for migratory birds are particularly threatening by draining and reclamation for human use so i am very thankful to www.google.com for providing us beautiful pics so that we can explain our topic well